Sharks can smell blood from a mile away. The truth, sharks have a highly acute sense of smell, but it's not that good. One of the fascinating things about sharks is that, unlike humans, sharks use their nostrils only for smelling, not for breathing, and that makes them particularly sensitive to smells. Some sharks can detect blood at a concentration one part per 10 billion, which is about one drop in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. But in the ocean, lots of factors figure in, including the speed at which the shark is swimming and the direction of the water current. It's estimated that in the open sea, a shark can smell blood from about a couple of hundred yards away. Not quite a mile, but still pretty impressive. Bears hibernate. The truth? That image you may have of Yogi Bear stretching and yawning after a season-long snooze is more Hollywood fancy than scientific fact. Bears do tuck themselves away for the winter as a way of conserving energy during the time of year when food and water are scarce. But many experts now avoid the word hibernation and say that bears spend winter in a lighter sleep state called torpor. The difference is key. Animals who hibernate lower their body temperature and slow their breathing, heart, and metabolic rates to the point where even loud noises and physical contact won't wake them up. Torpor also involves decreased breathing, heart, and metabolic rates, but the bear's body temperature decreases only slightly, and they can wake themselves when they need to. So if you don't want to be the victim of a bear attack, don't poke a bear in torpor. Giraffes sleep for only 30 minutes a day. The truth? It depends on their living conditions. Giraffes in the wild live their lives on high alert, always wary of potential predators sneaking up on them. As a result, they have evolved to sleep as little as 30 minutes a day, often in five-minute spells while standing up and in a half-awake, catnap kind of sleep. But in zoos and protected environments where they don't have to fear becoming some lion's lunch, giraffes can relax. As a result, they will sleep much longer, for as many as six hours a day. They'll even lie down and twist around to use their back end as a pillow. Anteaters inhale their prey. The truth, never mind what you see in those cartoons, anteaters don't actually vacuum up the insects they eat. Instead, inside that impressively long snout is an even more impressive two-foot-long tongue which they use to scoop up their ant meals. Their tongues are coated with a sticky saliva and can flick in and out of their mouths as many as 150 times per minute, which makes devouring a mound of ants or termites no problem at all. Spiders want to bite you. Put down the bug spray. That spider is not coming to get you, it doesn't want to bite you, and it probably couldn't hurt you even if it did. Like bats, spiders devour harmful insects and mostly stay out of humans' way. Yet, many people fear them, squish them, or scream and shudder at the sight of them. Spiders are not bloodsuckers, and they have no reason to bite anything that's too big for them to eat. In fact, arachnologist Rod Crawford of the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture writes that he has been bitten only twice over a 30-year period career of handling tens of thousands of live ones. In the rare instance that spider bites do occur, it's probably because someone startled the arachnid by reaching into a space it was occupying. Even the so-called aggressive house spider, also known as a hobo spider, isn't particularly aggressive toward humans. It may bite if it fears that its egg sac is in danger, but would rather avoid you than seek you out. Think you have a spider bite? Unless you actually saw the spider bite you, it's much more likely to be a flea or bed bug bite, a viral or bacterial infection, reaction to poison ivy. Cows are stupid. Cows aren't generally the first animal that comes to mind when we think of intelligence. We think of them standing in fields languidly chewing their cuds or bumping shoulder to shoulder with their herd mates as they wait for feeding or milking time. We describe people being herded like cattle as they shuffle mindlessly and powerlessly through airport security lines. There's the insult of calling someone a stupid cow, but vegetarians and animal rights activists have long argued that cows have more emotions and intelligence than we give them credit for. As it turns out, they are probably right. At least one organization says that cows have been observed to develop friendships with other cows, hold grudges, and mourn the loss of their calves to death or separation. Researchers at the University of Cambridge found that not only were cows capable of learning how to open a gate to get a food reward, they also reacted to their learning accomplishments by displaying increased heart rates and vigorous movement, which one animal researcher called evidence of a eureka moment similar to what humans experience when they learn something new. Sloths are lazy. Just as pig is often the go-to insult for someone perceived as messy or greedy, someone prone to lazing around on the couch might be described as a sloth. In fact, the animal gets its English name from the deadly sin of sloth, a profound laziness or sluggishness of the soul. But while sloths are by no means fast, with top speeds of just 6 to 8 feet per minute, their slow gait conserves energy, and their seemingly inactive bodies are actually working fairly hard. Sloths live in the treetops in tropical climates. Their hairy, slow-moving bodies provide a perfect environment for growing algae and fungus, giving sloths a greenish full-body camouflage. One of the sloth's main predators is the harpy eagle, which has speed and strength and the ability to attack from the air. 
A sloth has no chance of outrunning an eagle, or a big jungle cat such as a jaguar, so it instead relies on camouflage and complete stillness to make itself nearly invisible. Contrary to popular belief, sloths sleep only about 9.6 hours each day in the wild. As they sit motionless in the trees, their stomachs and intestines slowly and carefully digest the sloth's most recent meal, sometimes taking as long as 50 days to extract every available nutrient from a diet that consists mainly of leaves. Cats are aloof. Are you a cat person or a dog person? We've all heard the question at some point. As the stereotype goes, cats are aloof, sneaky, and independent, while dogs are social, loyal, and energetic. But if you've ever owned cats, you know that their individual personalities can be as different as those of people. According to the website of cat behavior consultant Pam Johnson Bennett, cats aren't aloof, they're focused. If they don't respond immediately when you speak to them, it may just be that they are too engrossed in looking for potential prey, like the foot you're about to move underneath your blanket. Cats may show affection by sitting on you or next to you, rubbing against you, bumping their heads into you and licking you. One 2013 study demonstrated that cats responded to their owner's voices by moving their heads and ears toward the sound, even if the owner was out of the cat's sight. The findings suggest that rather than being indifferent to humans, cats do indeed distinguish between their owners and unfamiliar people. Of course, this comes as no surprise to anyone whose cat has ever disappeared under a bed the moment guests arrive, only to come out of hiding and leap into a familiar lap looking for affection as soon as the coast is clear. Dogs are loyal. Before you accuse us of being completely heartless, we admit that wildly wrong may be a stretch for this particular animal stereotype. We've seen the videos of dogs refusing to leave their owners' final resting places, greeting their owners as they return from war and even running into traffic to pull a canine companion to safety. It's possible that some of these videos even made us cry a little, but are all dogs equally deserving of the man's best friend moniker? In his book The Truth About Dogs, author Stephen Budiansky suggests, mostly tongue-in-cheek, that dogs have us hoodwinked, feigning loyalty and devotion in return for prime real estate in front of a cozy fireplace, space in our beds, food from our plates, and license to get away with pretty much any quirky or disruptive behavior they can come up with. In 2013, a group of Hungarian researchers found that dogs responded to robots in the same manner that they responded toward people. In fact, given the choice between a robot that spoke the dog's name in a programmed voice, extended a gloved hand for the dog to sniff and directed the dogs toward hidden food, or a human that offered none of those rewards, the dogs indicated a preference for the robot, spending more time at the robot's side and gazing at the robot's head. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.